Hey, dream team creators. It's Heidi Scott. I haven't been live in this group in a long time, but today I have some stuff I want to share with you, and this is going to be part one of a two-part message that is just, I'm calling it, now what? We have had a lot of new creators join this team of Magnolia Design, uh, Design Company in the last, I don't know, two or three months. And we also have a lot of people who've been in it for a while that are pressing reset and wanting to get uh, going again or actually get started for the first time. So I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, now what? What should I do? How do I even get this, this ball rolling? Um, so as you're, as you're watching, say hi, let me know that I'm not just talking to my camera. <laughs> Um, feel free to ask questions along the way. I'm close enough I can actually see my phone. And uh, hey, Lori, thanks for joining me. And so I'm just gonna, I was holding this up just to show you something fun I'm working on. Today I'm doing chicken wire projects. That new stencil that they have at Magnolia with chicken wire is a super cute. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, if I haven't met you before, Hey, Regina. Uh, Regina, you don't actually go by, do you go by Regina? I have a friend named Regina. Um, hey, Nancy. I don't see who else jumped on. Oops, and if I touch my phone, I'm going to, sorry, make it wobble. Okay, so if I haven't met you before, my name's Heidi Scott. Um, I am related to you either as the person that you signed up to become a Magnolia creator under, or maybe I'm your grandmother or great-grandmother in the business, or something like that. So we are all part of this um, team called the Dream Team, and we're part of Jennifer McMongle's She's Crafty organization. She's our uh, person who's direct to the company. So um, what I wanna talk to about today is how to actually get started, um, because I know that's scary, and sometimes just being unsure of what to do and being a little scared can make you feel paralyzed maybe that's just me um, but I have some tips to share with you and I hope that they'll really put you at ease and make you feel that um, yeah I can get this started I don't have to go a hundred miles an hour I can start going two miles an hour and I can keep my business on two miles an hour if I want the whole time or I could speed it up to 65 or 100 it's totally up to you okay so if you're new um, the first thing or even if you're restarting the first thing I want to tell you is you can't keep your business a secret. If you do, then um, you won't get any sales, you won't have any creators join you, and it's super discouraging. So if you're afraid that your friends and family, the people you know, are going to perceive you as being pushy, which that is a very common um, obstacle that people have. Hey Bev. Hi Diane. Um, then I just want to assure you that they're not going to consider you pushy just for telling them what you're doing. Just for opening your mouth and not keeping that a secret anymore. So, um, how do you do that? How do you tell the world what you're doing in a way that you're going to feel comfortable with? Well, first of all, you need to, um, I'm going to ramble, okay, because I have so many thoughts. Um, I real, hey, Laura Lee, hi, Fern. I really do encourage you guys to be your authentic selves when you are um, out there presenting yourself and Magnolia to the world. Don't try to be your version of someone else or something else, okay? And also, don't feel like you have to be perfect. If you've been watching me, then you absolutely know that that is not necessary because I mess up almost every single time I put something out there about Magnolia Design Company. So how do you tell the world? Well, the first thing is, if you're brand new, um, you can do one of these posts that's um, just a little teaser. Uh, it could be a picture that you grab from uh, our, this dream team. I've posted a ton of images here. And that you post on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever social media you like, or text it to from some friends and just say, guess what? I'm so excited. I'm starting something new. I can't believe I'm doing it. Something like that. Just a total tease. 
Don't tell them what the company is. So don't post a picture that says Magnolia Design Company. Um, and just put that out there. That's a really good first thing to do. Then when you get your box of goodies, your starter kit, or if you're restarting, pull out that box of all those goodies or pull out some of your favorite things that you've purchased since you joined. Hey, Michelle. Um, then you can do what's called an unboxing or a presenting video. And there's two ways to do it. You can do it with your phone or whatever device you record on aimed at the stuff. Aimed down here like this. Here's this and oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that and blah, 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 blah. These are the things I got in my box. I'm super excited, okay? Sorry. So that's one way you can do it. Um, Cause I know a lot of you guys have been telling me recently that you feel uncomfortable in front of a camera and so you don't want it to be uh, you. Okay, so you can do the exact same unboxing as anyone else. The only thing is it's just your voice and your hands pulling out uh, what you got. Telling people why you're excited about it, what it is, dropping a few little hints about, uh, you guys know I've always been crafty and I love this blah, blah, blah. And so I just decided to take a plunge and become a creator with Magnolia and this is what came in my starter kit. So you can do that. That's just an unboxing or revealing type of a post and it can be your face or your hands but your voice for sure okay um if this is important if you do that and you do not share your url your link then you're inviting anyone who's curious to go and google magnolia design company and get on somebody else's website become a customer of theirs, place an order for them, or even become a creator under someone else. So you have to, have to, have to share your URL in pretty much every post that you're gonna do on any social media. Okay, so I wrote this out because I know, uh, I personally am not great with technology, but I've, figured it out as I've been going along. And I know a lot of you guys have told me that you're not great with technology. If you are, you're way ahead of the rest of us. Okay, so how do you get your URL or your website? This is what I wrote down. It's going to start with HTTPS colon or semicolon or whatever that, that thing is called, slash slash. And then right here is going to be whatever you selected as your URL. If you don't know what that is, you can call Magnolia Design Company and they'll tell you. Um, Jordan is answering the phone these days and he's super nice and super helpful. If you want to, if you know what it is and you want to change that, you can do that in your back office. Um, but mine, for example, is DIY Dreaming. So mine goes HTTPS colon slash slash, no spaces or anything in here, DIY Dreaming. Okay, and then dot, magnoliadesignco.com. That's what your URL is, simple. So I recommend that you put that somewhere, put it in your notes if you have an iPad or an iPhone so that you can just go grab it and paste it into everything you do. Hey Rose, I don't know who else is on but it looks like there's 14 people on. Say hi if you're watching, okay. And if you joined in the middle, please go back and watch from the beginning. And if you're watching this on replay down the road, all the information's just the basic stuff to get started. So it's not time sensitive. Okay, so anytime you're gonna post anything about Magnolia, if you don't include your URL, your website, this, then you're inviting people to go look it up and they won't find you, I'm sorry. They'll find somebody else. So that is just, I see that happen and that is such a disappointment. And sometimes it can be fixed, but just, um, just put a link in the description of whatever you're doing, or at the very least say, I will put my link in the first comment on this post. 
so that people know where to find it. That's the other thing I want to tell you and then we'll keep going. Um, you have to make this super simple. If you feel like it's being pushy to make it easy for people to just go look and see what in the world is she doing. Hey Debbie, you were the one that inspired me to, um, to talk about this and I will talk about personal pages in just a second. Let me write that down. Okay, I do have that down. Um, what was I saying? I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got so excited when I saw Debbie join because she was the one that inspired me to do this. Um, okay, so you can put it either in the body or in the comments. And if you think it's being pushy to tell people where they can go, people are curious. They want to go see, what in the world is Debbie doing now? Oh my gosh, I'm so curious, what is this? Um, so it's not being pushy just to share that. And you know what? There's such a thing as cookies, which I'm terrible with internet and technology stuff, but I understand basically what cookies are. Cookies are when you go to a website, then if you ever Google it again within the next 30 or 60 days or whatever that time period is, um, it will take you to that same website. So your friends, if they just go to look at your website, then they're device will have your cookies in it. And the next time they just happen to get on and Google Magnolia Design Company, it'll take them to your website. So you want your friends to have cookies, to get your cookies. Is this good advice, Diane? Diane is a, um, and Laura Lee's been at it for a long time too. They're, they've both um, been doing this the same long time as me. Okay, so, um, so start, like I was saying, start with a little teaser where you post a picture of something, not the company name, and just say something to the effect, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, I started something new. Then if your friends bite, or contacts bite, and they respond back and say, what? Then of course tell them, and give them your URL website link, okay? Um, the second thing is to do the unboxing or the reveal. And we just talked about that. It could be your face or just your hands, but it needs to be your voice. Um, the third thing is you can, you can just start sharing pictures of the things that you're working on. Whatever you've done, whatever you love, whatever you're excited about, chances are what you like, your friends and connections will be attracted to also. So, share pictures, but make sure you have your URL website in the description, seriously, or else somebody's going to say, oh my gosh, that little truck with flowers in it is so dang cute. I think she said Magnolia. I'm going to Google it, and then they'll go to someone else. You don't want that to happen. Um, okay, so then start doing projects, and somewhere along the way, you can just share why you decided to do this. Simple. Um, it's not going to feel pushy to any of your friends for you to do that because you're not saying please buy Please go to my website and spend money. You're not saying that you're just saying I'm so excited if you want to check it out or to see some of the other really super cute designs they have You can go here. Here's my website and I'm gonna make it super easy for you because I'm gonna make it so that you can find it if they have to go hunt it down. I see this oh Gosh all the time where people are doing projects and I don't see any way to access their website. They're either doing a live or they've posted pictures and there's no link. That's terrible. That's like a heartbreaker. Um, okay, so you gotta tell the world. That was the one thing. Okay, now where do you tell the world? That's the next thing I wanna talk about. This is what Debbie, in her, she sent me a message and it made me think, oh my gosh, this is what I need to explain exactly. Okay, some people when they start have already been doing the social media thing for a while. A lot of people when they start have not. And they're gonna have to learn all of that. Like, um, <laughs> like everything, how do you copy a link, all of that. I can't teach you any of that. That kind of basic computer, basic social media stuff I had to learn on my own and you will have to learn that on your own too. And Mr. Google, do you know Mr. Google? 
He can tell you everything you need to know. There's a bazillion YouTube videos out there that say how to copy a link, how to put a picture on a Facebook post, how to put a picture on Instagram, all that kind of basic stuff. You can just look it up. It's, I mean, none of that is brain surgery. It's just hard the first couple of times that you do it. But I can't do it for you. Nobody did it for me. To learn it, you have to do it for yourself. And if you um, feel overwhelmed just to do the first step, then you're never going to get started. So you just got to force yourself to do the first step, whatever that is. But I don't encourage you to, the day you order your kit, to go and create some fancy business page or a website. You do not need to do that. Most of us, I think Diane and Laura Lee would probably say the same thing. I don't know who else is on here that are um, oldies like us. Hey, Karen. But um, we did not start on a business page or on a Facebook group. We just started on our own personal page, doing all these things, doing that little tease, doing the unboxing, starting to share pictures, starting to share project ideas, sharing our link, seeing who is interested, getting our feet wet, getting used to it, and then whatever time is right for you down the road, then you ask Mr. Google, not me, because I can't help you do that, how do I set up a business page? And there'll be a hundred videos that you can watch. I did it so long ago, I honestly couldn't tell you if my life depended on it. Um, but so you're gonna, um, down the road set up a business page not from the start because if you if you set up a business page right from the start that has zero followers zero likes and you do all these things that i've just been talking about guess how many people will see it zero so you got to start with your warm audience and develop some interest and then when it's time for you to set up the business page, if you want to do it, you don't ever even have to. A lot of people just work from their personal pages, their personal Instagram, and through their friends and family, you know, live and that kind of thing. Um, but if you do want to do that down the road, that's when you invite those people that have been expressing interest or that have been watching what you've been doing or have gone and purchased you invite them to come over to your new page. That's how you do it. Um, not the other way around because you'll, you'll get so discouraged, you'll have nobody watching, nobody following, and um, nobody's gonna find it. So you gotta start on your own personal whatever it is that you have. Um, and then decide if you wanna move on to the next step. And every little thing, I mean there's some very minor tips I can tell you, like how to flip your phone so that the words are the right. Um, oh gosh, Karen, okay, I'm gonna share that in just a minute. How to get your words so that they're right, so that they're not backwards. Those kind of little tips I can share with you, but you can also Google that. And um, when I started on my personal page, I had absolutely no clue about that. I only learned the how to flip your videos thing maybe one year ago and I've been doing this for two and a half years so you don't start out knowing everything you you know things as you're going along and um, if you're thinking this is so common if you're thinking I will wait until I know everything and then I will get started you will never get started because you can only learn those things by doing them and making mistakes. And your friends and family and contacts, they love you. They are, um, they're gonna giggle along with you if you giggle at your mistakes. They're gonna say, she's not perfect. Maybe I could do this too. Hmm, you don't need, she doesn't seem to know what she's doing, but she's having fun. Um, so maybe I could do this too. Okay, no, that's no dig on you, Karen, because I'm not saying you don't know what you do, but Karen just said that she had a creator sign up under her on her very first post. She says she basically got on Facebook and, let's see what this says, if I can open it up. Oh, sorry. Nope, it's not letting me. Um... I think she said something to the effect in her post 
that she spent her Christmas money on ordering a starter kit and becoming a creator with Magnolia Design Company. And she must have included her, her URL website. Because otherwise, that new creator that she said joined after she put her first post on, they would have joined under someone else. So, now I'm not saying that, um, that the first time you post that anything's going to happen. But if you never post, nothing will happen. Um, nothing. Okay, so let's see. I want to tell you just a couple of things in this part one. And then in the near future, we'll do part two. Um, oh, and let me just say this one thing for Karen and for anyone else. As you have creators join under your team, if you can go back and find that email that I sent you with the links to, the, to my dream team page, to the company creator pay, Facebook page or group, and to the She's Crafty Team page, if you can find those and send those to your new person, then they can, at their own time, go and look through all that, and that's where they're gonna get information. So, um, so please make sure that you encourage them to join those three groups, and that you, um, that you help them start to feel part of something bigger than themselves. Okay. So let's see, uh, I wanna talk about being you and how you'll find your people. And then I wanna talk about the magic of sprinkle. And then I'll quit talking for today. Um, I am working on some fun projects. You wanna have a quick little sneak peek? So I'm playing with my, we'll just get off track for a second. I'm playing with my chicken wire stencil that I just got. If you are a creator, then you need to be creating on a regular basis. You can't order a kit and start a business if you aren't doing things and figuring out how to do things because people are gonna ask you, how do I unwind that embroidery hoop? How far out on the edges do I go? Um, how do you get it glued on there? They're gonna ask you questions. And if you have just been watching other people do things, you won't be able to answer any questions. Um, so you've got to create and this is what I'm creating today to share and you've got to get excited about it um, If you don't if you really honestly do not like crafting or stenciling or wood burning or Doing ink on t-shirts and tea towels and pillows and stuff. If you don't like that You're not gonna have a great time with this business if you do like it and you share that genuine enthusiasm um, you'll find there there are people out there like you and you'll find each other and those will be your people so you have to be your authentic you to find your authentic people because those are the people who will shop from you that will support you that will be on every post that you do that will comment that will purchase things that may become creators that may refer a friend that kind of thing okay so this is what I'm making is this is that um, the chicken wire stencil on some canvas using gray chalk paste and it's on an embroidery hoop now that it's dry. And then I stenciled that Love Bloom stencil on these little different pieces of canvas that when it's all fully dry, I'm gonna cut it out and fuzz the edges and I'm gonna put it somehow on this and I might add some greenery and a ribbon, I don't know, I'm figuring it out. So that's one thing I'm doing today. And then the other thing I'm doing is working on this, which this is on the back of here. This is just a frame. On the back of it is the chicken wire stencil. On the front of it is the track. So I could wash the track off and put something different on there. Those are the kind of ideas that people love. But I hope you get my point that you have to be creating. If you order your kit and you have not Doug, you have not like jumped right into it immediately, been so excited to open it up and start creating, then this, this is gonna be hard for you because that is what you 100% absolutely have to do. Hey, Kimberly, I hope what I'm saying makes sense. If you're joining late, go back to the beginning because I have a whole bunch of steps of what to do to get started. Um, and if you have creators underneath you, feel free to tell them well, first of all, hopefully you'll help them join this group and then tell them if you thought this was 
worthwhile to watch this video. Okay, so once you start putting your projects out there and telling people how you did it, that's what they want to know. Uh, sharing your mistakes and your wins and whatever it is that you're excited about that isn't perfect. Okay, so I have a boo-boo right here and there was another boo-boo on here somewhere. It might be kind of hidden because it's up here. But anyway, so your projects don't have to be perfect. But once you start sharing that, then the people who like the kind of projects that you're doing will be attracted to you. And over time, once they figure out that they know, like, and trust you, and they have cookies because they've, they've been to your website a few times because heck, it was there. All they had to do was push a button. Then they will start shopping They'll start telling people, and that is how it grows. But you have to find your real people. So if you see something I do here and you like that idea, do your version of it. Don't be you playing Heidi Scott, though, because that's not authentic, and um, that won't attract, attract real people. Um, Debbie says, I make it look so easy. You know what? It really is because I have one key to everything. Do you guys want to know what it is? I do not require myself to be perfect. I am completely okay with making mistakes. And I make lots of them. Lots. Oh my gosh. I've done lives where my dogs have had a knockdown, drag out fight while I was in the middle of my Facebook live. I've had my device completely tip over. I've had major disasters with my projects. I always seem to have people calling while I'm on my phone doing a live. And it, I just laugh it off and people are fine. Debbie says she makes less messes, LOL, yeah. So I never pretend that I'm perfect or that I know what I'm doing. And I, in fact, I frequently say I'm terrible with technology, it's true. If you're great with technology, don't say that because that's not authentic. But if you're, you know, my age, it's a struggle. I think for most people, maybe it isn't for you, but it is for me. Um, so be your real self, your authentic self. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Do include your website URL link unless you want people to Google and go somewhere else. And um, do get started. Even if you don't know what you're doing, the very first project you do, do it first, practice a little bit, and then do it and take pictures and share that or do it with, it's just, with your phone just aimed at your hands and share that or do the whole full thing, but you gotta do it. And right now with COVID, it's, I know there's people do their businesses all different ways, but it's honestly not the best time to be starting a business where you're doing actual live workshops and stuff. If you are, kudos to you. But for the time being, I think that just starting at two miles an hour, not 100, on some of your social media is a good way to get your feet wet and get started. And then it won't be so scary to do the next thing, but you gotta do the first thing. Okay, I see Tamara's on. Hey, Tamara. And Rebecca's on. Okay, um, if you're just joining us, go back to the beginning and watch this whole thing. Because um, I give all the scoops about how to actually get started or how to re restart and where to do that and why. Okay, the last thing I want to tell you is what the magic of Sprinkle is. So, um, so say you get started and you find your 15 people that start shopping from you and start watching everything you're doing and they're excited and you're excited and then you never go past that 15, eventually you'll work yourself out of a business. You have to constantly be bringing new people in. You want to be attracting them authentically to you, your authentic self. And everybody has that. Um, whatever that is. So once you get comfortable doing some Facebook Lives, whether it's on your face or your hands, or doing projects and sharing that, 
um, in addition to always having your website URL, you need to be saying something to the fact. If you like the kind of craft projects that I do here, or if you like crafting, I would love it if you would sprinkle this to your social media. I would love it if you would tell your friends that love crafting about my page, XYZ Crafts, whatever it is, .magnoliadesignco.com. Um, so you need to um, be bringing new people on and sprinkling is how you can get outside of your own little circle. Facebook does not like you to say share. They don't like that word written. Um, there's a lot of words they don't like, like sale, promotion, opportunity. I mean, you just have to, as you're going along, start to observe things, be um, curious, get to know Mr. Google, ask him lots of questions, um, join some coaching groups, but not from day one, I'm just saying. Okay, so, so Facebook doesn't, uh, doesn't like that word. I don't think Instagram does either. So, um, and you, okay, I hope I don't step on anyone's toes because I really don't mean to. But if you come across as desperate for people to share, then you come across as desperate. And I don't think anyone wants to come across that way. So I did that in the beginning. I had a big old sign that said, please share. I knew I couldn't say it out of my mouth, but I had a big old sign right there that said, please share. And that is kind of a turn off. Hey, Hilda, how are you doing? Did I say hi to Tamara? I don't know, I think I did. Um, so I don't do that anymore. I mean, you can start out doing that if you want, if it's not like majorly obnoxious. But I think instead, if you put it in their perspective, in your words, in your authentic self, um, that if you've like, you, oh, you guys know I'm crazy about, you know, doing these truck projects or whatever it is, using chicken wire or I love vintage pages or whatever it is your project is. You, um, if you guys um, like this, these kind of projects, I would love it if you would sprinkle this to your social media or... Uh, if you have crafty friends, I would love it if you would tell them about DIY dreaming. Or sometimes I'll say, um, if you feel like it, I would love it if you would sprinkle. It's all f for them. It's not you saying, please help my business. Um, so this really might be more of a part two thing. Hey, Robin, and let's see who else was on. And Margaret, hey guys. Um, yes, Diane, we can talk soon. Um, so that's just my, my, um, what I notice, what I think. But again, you're going to do this your way. And this is just all I'm telling you is from my experience, what has worked for me. Um, so if you feel, uh, comfortable having a big old sign right next to you that says please share uh, spread the love or whatever it is that you want to say and and you don't you really honestly don't think that that comes across in a negative way at all then do it by all means I did have a few kind of snotty people back in the day when I was doing that say to me, make kind of mean comments to me, like, could you be any more obvious about asking people to share? Or could you get that obnoxious share sign? I'll show you what it looks like, because it's right here, I still have it. Let me get it. Um, could you get that obnoxious thing out of your way so I can see what you're doing? Oh shoot, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. I can get it without knocking everything else. <laughs> I thought I was so smart. And this is the stuff that you just learn as you're going along. No one can tell you this. I'm telling you this, but you have to experience it yourself. Okay, so this is what I would have sitting right next to me whenever I was on a live. Spread the love. <laughs> and occasionally I would say, I would, if, uh, please spread the love on your social media. 
Okay, so this was it. I don't know why I hung on to it in case I ever decided I wanted to come back to it. And it's kind of cute, but I haven't decided to come back to it. So you have to make that decision for yourself. Okay, let's see, are there any questions? I, okay, Hilda says, is it okay if I call you later when I get off work? Yes, absolutely you can. However, you need to know that um, I have a super hard time confining my DIY dreaming business to any kind of set time. It sort of takes over my whole life. So... If you call me past about 7 p.m. Eastern time, chances are I'm not going to pick up. Um, I am a morning person, so you're welcome to call me anytime from 7 a.m. on. And of course, you can send me a message. I would I love to talk with you guys. That's the easiest way. But maybe you could call me during your lunch break or when you have a little time off or on a Saturday or Sunday during those hours. You can always send me a text if it's something urgent. Um, but I, I try not to work in the evenings. Um, one thing is my husband gets super aggravated about it. And also, you know, I just, I want to have that three hours away from this because otherwise this is what I do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I love it. Let's see. Hey, Joey, how are you doing? Did I have other questions? But yes, anyone in this whole entire team, whether I'm your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, you are welcome to call me. And um, that my phone number was in that welcome email that I sent you. Um, if you don't get me, please leave a message and I'll call you back when I get a, a moment. If you just call and you don't leave a message, then I'll see a number I don't recognize and I won't call you back. Um, texting is super easy for me if you want to text me because I can answer that anytime. Um, anyways, I just want you guys to, um, to have the courage uh, to get started, to take that first step, to tell the world. There was a trainer that Magnolia hired. Mm, I can't even think of what her name is. She's darling. Um, and she trains for them a lot, so keep your eyes open for that. All Everything that she does is pink. She's really cute. Anyway, she tells this funny story about how she signed up to be a Mary Kay consultant. And she went on to be like at the tip, tip, top of that company. And you're thinking, wow, I wonder what she did. And she said, and for the first four years, I kept it completely confidential. I did not tell a soul. I went to all the meetings. I did all the training. But I did not tell a soul that I was with Mary Kay. It's funny. So I hope you won't do that either. Um, and just... I don't know if there's anything else. I know I've been a little bit MIA. Uh, hey, Christine. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos here because I honestly haven't known what to, what to share. I, all I can share is my own experience, and I know it's so different for everyone. But I've just decided that um, going forward, that I'm going to use this Dream Team page a lot. I'm gonna share, and I want you guys to all follow me on DIY Dreaming because then you can sort of, you can see what I'm doing. Like today, I did this little tease, a little post that said, uh, chicken wire, really? Yep, chicken wire, exclamation point. Just to get people curious. They're probably thinking, the ones who follow me, what in the world is she talking about? Well, I'm gonna be watching to see what she's doing. And then she'll, they will, later today, when I'm ready, get to see a few projects that have chicken wire. But anyways, that's not the important thing. I just want you to know that you can watch um, DIY Dreaming and um, kind of see what I'm doing. And if that feels authentic to you, um, you can do your own version of some of the things that I do. Um, I have been 
walking on this path just a little bit longer than you. Did I say hi to Christine? I think I did. Um, can you use small paintbrushes and acrylic paint and with the stencils? Ooh, that's a good question. I'll answer that in just a second. What was I saying? Obviously, I'm not perfect, right? And I forget what I'm doing while I'm in the middle of a Facebook Live. And people, I don't know, they don't mind. I don't require anyone that I watch to be perfect. Anyway, so you can watch what I'm doing and do your version of that. Um, create your projects from ideas that you see. That's how everything works. Anymore, there's no original idea. It's just an idea that people put their own original spin on. So feel free to do that. Okay, so Debbie's asking one last question and then I'm gonna hop off. Okay, so she, I think, I can't see the whole thing for some reason because I don't know how to. I'm not great with technology. She's asking, can you use small paint brushes and acrylic paint with the stencils? Okay, let me tell you two answers. Yes, you can if you would like. That's one answer. The other answer is, oh, I would really not recommend it. And you know why? It's because acrylic paint, chalk paint, latex paint, 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 any kind of paint, it dries very quickly. And I'm gonna show you something. The little holes in the mesh on your stencils can get clogged, filled up with paint, and then you have you won't have a design. So it really does lessen the life of your stencils to use that. Also, it's thinner, generally speaking, so it's harder to prevent it from bleeding under your stencils. Use acrylic paint all you want to paint your surfaces, chalk paint, whatever. And then do be sure that you either wax or seal them if there would before you stencil. But um, I don't recommend you do it on your stencils, okay? You're, you're going to lessen the life of your stencil. You're going to not get as great of a result. And then the other thing to think about from a business perspective is suppose you get on a Facebook Live and you show people how to do this and you're not showing them how to use the Magnolia ink, the Ma Magnolia chalk paint, the um, new Pyro pen. You're showing them something else, then guess how many people are going to buy those things? No one. They're going to say, oh, well, she uses acrylic paint. I can just run over to Walmart and get that. I'm not going to buy. So I hope you see what I'm, I'm saying there. So those are the two reasons. Maybe what we'll do, if you guys want, tell me in the comments, is let's just um, once a week, let's just have a QA. and a I'll ramble for five minutes about whatever I'm thinking about. And then you guys ask questions. And I'll, I'll get this worked out in my mind about when I could squeeze this into my life. Um, but I think that, would be, that could be good. So you guys could ask those kind of questions. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you need me, send me a text. I do try to look back on my Facebook posts. But, you know, when you have 600 people commenting on something and you've done five posts every day for two and a half years, sometimes it's, those messages get lost. And so I'm not ignoring you. Hey, Lori, I'm definitely not ignoring you. Oh, I, you were on at the very beginning. And she says, thank you, that would be awesome. I think so too. Um, your messages just get lost, I'm sorry. So send me a text. That's the best thing, a text on the phone. And my phone number is in that, um, that welcome email that I sent you. If you don't have it, send me a message here and I'll, I'll send you my phone number. Okay, have a great rest of the day. Um, if you wanna see these chicken wire projects, you can watch that on DIY Dreaming. Um, if you haven't opened your box yet or made your first project, I encourage you to do that today. I am gonna have a challenge this week. I'm gonna start doing that too. And that is to figure out what this is for you and how to upload your photo onto your Magnolia website. Because when people go to your website, you want them to see that little round head. Mine is a cartoon, you can do whatever you want. A real picture or a meme, whatever, but figure out how to do that so people know for sure if they're on your website. Those two things, find this 
and upload a picture. And there's instructions at Magnolia for doing that. So anyways, okay, see you later. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.